Hello. So I thought I'd go through uh, one last video and just explain what divines are, how they work, how they're different to regular items, and which ones are probably worth using. So first, to unlock divines, um, you got to play in Beyond mode. Uh, I've got a few Beyond mode playthroughs on this uh, channel already, if uh, you haven't already seen them. Um, but the idea is that you submit a number of artifacts, and the artifacts that you submit um, they are pretty much your, uh, how you have chances of unlocking divines. Uh, as far as I'm aware, having unlocked all of them, you can only unlock one divine per Beyond run. Um, there are other things that influence which divines you unlock. Uh, particularly if you play with a computer simulation or Elemental Triumvirate, you are guaranteed to unlock a particular divine. Um, but when you actually unlock one, it will appear in your codex as a regular item but with a little pink um, indicator down here and as you can see here pink indicator on the hand axe means that the divine variant is active but down here on whip the pink circle is not lit i can light it but that's indicating that that is the normal variance that is what i will get so the idea is you only carry one divine at a time so if you so if I picked up a hand axe right now, I've got the divine hand axe active. So I would always pick up a divine hand axe. I would get the divine version of the hand axe. But if then I went and opened a chest or bought in a shop something like a divine pickaxe, hand axe would go away and I'd get the pickaxe instead. They adhere to the same rules as, as legendaries. Although you can have one divine and one legendary at any time. Um, you, you know, you can have one of each. Um, I will say that Godhood, um, I forget where it is along here, here we are, Godhood, oh sorry, Godmonger, um, allows you to have multiple legendaries, there isn't anything in the game that allows you to have multiple divines, apart from if you have substitute, um, whenever you would lose an item, lose this item instead, if you pick up a second divine, you will just lose the substitute, but then a third divine, you'll probably lose all your other divines. Um, so, that's pretty much how they work and what, you know, what the difference is between a, a, a divine and a regular item. Uh, the, other th the other thing is that once you've unlocked a divine, you get the option to turn it on or off. I don't believe this is actually mentioned anywhere in the game, but you can turn off your divines. I don't like a lot of them, so I don't play with all of them turned on at any time. But to turn one on or turn it off, just right click and it will it will change to whether or not you're picking up the regular or the divine version. So the main thing you really want to bear in mind with divines is that since you can only carry one at a time turning them all on is generally a bad idea because you can't really see because of my um, heirlooms but there are 57 possible divines which means that there are what 518 items so a ten over a tenth a divine or, or could be divine um some of them are more common than others and there aren't any particularly high-end divine items apart from pound of flesh that one's kind of special so you're going to get divines sort of frequently especially if you pick up lucky bamboo um so you don't you want you only really want to have the divines you particularly love turned on you really want to thin out the the pool of them because the more you have active the the more chance you have of overwriting something that you'd picked up that you actually like quite a lot um, so that's really that's the whole gist of it. Um, so I'm just going to go through the ones I actually have active, explain why I like them, and uh, that'll probably be it for the video and possibly the series as well, unless I record some more hero trials. So gear check um, items will always drop on the ground rather than you picking them up. Uh, divine gear check makes you omen proof. That's the only reason I like that. Uh, divine hand axe chop down signs as per regular hand axe, but causes more signs to spawn. This just gives you free loot. Uh, Divine Pickaxe doubles all currency drops, so doubles coins, doubles diamonds, possibly doubles purple diamonds, I'm not sure. Uh, this is one of the keys to unlocking the um, oh, Diamond in Disguise achievement. Uh, pick up a coin that was worth at least five coins. Um, then we have Divine Spyglass, is another thing that just makes you omen proof. Um, divine binoculars make minions just appear out on the field. That's fantastic if you're playing as a hunter. It's pretty good anyway, really. Um, then divine ankh. 
negates death once. That is not a revive. That's different to a revive because that also gives you revives. So that, it doesn't really make you death proof, but it makes you nervous, damn it. Um, Divine Pound of Flesh. Um, yeah, instead of taking inventory uh, damage, seal infantry slots instead. And then if anything causes you to lose Divine Pound of Flesh, so in other words, if you pick up a different Divine, then yeah, all your infantry slots become unsealed again. So if you hold on to that and never lose it, then you're going to gradually destroy your infantry, or at least seal it. That's not necessarily always the worst thing, though. Then we have Divine Miracle Seed. This is ridiculous. Um, I don't know how many how many times better it is than regular Miracle Seed. I suspect it's two or three times better. If you can apply two of these to one level, you're not even going to be able to see the sides of it. This makes tremendous levels. Uh, it's very good for generating loot. Uh, very good for farming for things like paint. Um, then uh, Divine Wager. Um, it's like the regular Wager. Uh, cheaper though for some reason um, but uh, well some of the, the the one thing about divine items or one of the things is that the costs aren't always the same and even if the divine item is clearly an improvement sometimes it'll be cheaper but then divines there's an effort required to unlock them um, so yeah 50 ch 50 percent chance to double your coins so it's like using the regular wager except no chance of losing your coins uh, this Divine Horseshoe no longer gives you a better chance of finding um, loot, but improves the value of your coins. Uh, a chest can't contain omens, and you're immune to omens until you make a mistake. So it's super garlic. It's, it's garlic with extra effects. Uh, Divine Slingshot. Uh, yeah, reveal three random cells each turn for 20 turns. If you have something that's causing... Um, Making it so that your countdown timers don't go down, like your, your status effect timers. So things like the Timeless mod or the uh, Hourglass. This can get an awful lot of mileage. But even if your timers are going down at the normal rate, that's revealing 60 cells. It's very nice. Uh, Divine Voucher. Um, it's like the regular voucher, except you choose the item you get for free. So that's nice. Uh, Divine Boomerang. Blow up a random hidden cell and the 3x3 three three around it. Um, so it takes more cells to uh, return your boomerang, but it's nine times as effective. So yeah, it's pretty nice. It also, since it's explosive, um, as opposed to just... Oh no, that's all, also explosive, but since it's a 3x3, three three, uh, you have more chance of like killing bosses, stuff like that. Uh, Divine World Map unlocks and uncompletes all stages. This can be a bit of a poison chalice. Uh, the, if you don't mind replaying levels to get more loot, this is fantastic. If you have something in your inventory which is adding more stage mods whenever you go back into a level, this can be quite bad. Also, if you had like two levels in your quest, one of which was Nightmare, one of which was Frozen, maybe you don't always want to unlock and uncomplete all stages and go back and replay that stage. So there's a time and a place for using this. It tends to be quite good in Beyond mode. Um, it gives you more levels to recharge your mastery, gives you more chances to go back into shops to get more money, uh, that kind of thing. Um, then you'll notice not many divine um, armor piece, uh, pieces, apart from simple robe, which I don't really care for. If, if a level has more than two mods, oh sorry, two or more mods, um, it fortifies itself. Uh, that that is absolutely nothing to write home about as far as I'm concerned. It, it doesn't suit my playstyle. Um, then we have Divine Lantern. This is interesting. If it's not a zero, this item retains its mana. So you can reliably glean hidden cells. It's usually not difficult to tell if a cell has a zero in it. <clears throat> so if you're careful with this, it's infinite free gleaning. So that's yeah, it's powerful, and it's sort of obvious as to how that is powerful. It won't necessarily win you any runs, but it will certainly help you. Uh, Divine Watering Can. Spawn random loot in all empty visible cells. That's ridiculous. Um, it's only, um, what, about a, um, an extra 66% uh, mana cost? I mean, that's not a big deal. 
It's more expensive, but it's a very powerful item. Uh, a thief bag? So, regular thief bag, you've got a 50% chance to steal an item and escape. Um, if you fail, you'll escape and the shop will shut. Either way, if you use this, the shop will shut. Um, this one, it's only a 50-50 chance that you'll even have to escape. The shop might stay open. Uh, at any rate, you are definitely going to steal the item. So that's kind of nice. And do we keep any others active? Um, Divine Bugle is ridiculous. Uh, any cell of a three or greater, spawn a familiar, and pass a turn. So all of your familiars are going to move once, or twice if you have the whip. Um, this will get you out of a lot of jams. And also, the mana cost is quite low, if you notice. Actually, it's uh, less than the regular Bugle, and it's cheaper too. Um, the other thing I'm going to point out while I'm in here is the Divine Stocking. Because this is quite difficult to get, you have to have had a lot of snowballs stockpiled. Uh, so just to show you the effect, it's very expensive, it's 500 mana. Gain a present for every item shop you've completed. So it's not actually that great, I don't keep it active. Um, there is one Divine Omen. Um, you may as well keep it active because it um, negates the bad effects of Shadowbind. Uh, but yeah, that will cause Shadowbind to consume om omens instead of consume lives. So that's worth keeping on. And there are no Divine Legendaries. And that would really be about about the whole lot. Um, you'll no oh, sorry, if you'll notice that um, if I go into crafting, uh, there are a number of craftable, craftable Divines. Um, which, if you've ever wondered why the uh, World Clay says it can't unlock Divine items, um, I believe that means if you use World Clay to make an item... That's either going to mean that you can't craft divine variants using world clay. Or no 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 no. No, I think it means that if you use world clay to play beyond, you'll never unlock a divine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what that means. So if I used all of my world clay here, if I had any divines to unlock, world clay would not give me any of them. I think that's what that means. I don't really have a way of testing that anymore because I don't have any divines to unlock. Um, the uh, Sweeping Heights expansion may change that, I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much Divines in a nutshell. So uh, yeah, cheers.